it's ironic how I look at things because um, when you look at game theory, nonlinear dynamics, chaos theory, the Feynman numbers, and um, look at the different patterns in terms of the universe and how the world works, every sort of statistical anomaly, it's sort of obvious that um, everything is mathematically intact in terms of how humans act our own existence, the um, reoccurring patterns in history, our own um, DNA structure, our own molecular structure, everything is very mathematically and articulately structured. That um, the possibility of intelligent design, um, once you look at the um, thousands of different equations, the research, research and all that mathematically, it's very um, likely that um, these sort of things were planned out. But in terms of um, how the universe sort of works, it um, always fascinated me in some sort of way. Like, in terms of um, how I see other humans think, it's kind of quite differently than um, my own sort of mentality. Like, humans um, always, especially um, when looking at things that, as such the political spectrum, Humans from um, one side would argue um, that that, that um, they want a democracy or something like that, or they want to do um, what's best for um, these specific minority or lesser groups. But um, they don't understand how that works, because if you represent one, one side of the argument, the other side gets underrepresented. In terms of how a democracy works, you can um, say, say countries that have the um, Islamic Brotherhood or other things, they're technically a democracy. Like if 80 or 90% um, Muslims agree and then the other um, 20 or 15% Christians in that country disagree on a specific law, I'm pretty sure um, the Christian minorities or the Jews or the Tzatziki minorities would be um, very underrepresented. In terms of um, when I look at different political policies with um, leftist policies in particular, I always see like they have some sort of empathy, but they also have lack of remorse in um, lots of things like um, in terms of how the economy is structured. Hyperinflation is a growing problem and the way they go about fixing that is completely horrendous. In terms of um, monstrosities against humanity, when I look at the pro-choice um, movement, they always have um, very um, straw man arguments like um, why one of their uh, most common arguments is why should I have a baby that I can't afford to keep and if I put um, an adoption they'd go to like a foster home and um, not have a quote unquote good life. First of all I also had a problem with um, a good life being valued by money or um, monetary gains like this is a problem in um, modern society that like if you have the most money you're probably a happy person or you probably have a good life and that's a very wrong mentality. Second of all, in terms of um, rallies for life and um, the pro-life movement, what I've seen um, people do is some people would um, be very tempted to get an abortion just because of that very specific argument and um, they would there would be someone within like a five or six mile area looking to adopt that doesn't have much money for um, a full adoption process to and lots of logistics things, but um, they can provide them a very good, comfortable and sustainable life. And they and the baby would um, end up growing very happy to have parents like that. So that abortion argument, as you could tell, have been um, dismantled. Other arguments like, um, why should I have a rapist baby? But um, what the, 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 ba the baby also never raped you. So it's just like, it's just like the whole argument of ethics and, and you bring themes of nihilism, utilitarianism, deontology, and things like that. Now, um, what particularly interested me in terms of the leftist movement was they always um, claim to um, represent a minority or certain groups, but they always had different lobbyists. Like they had um, defense lobbyists, especially um, with different campaigns. They always they always would um, do politicians would go and say um, this side is racist or this side is racist but um, 
there would be leaked videos of them doing racist things or um, them partnering up or funding people who um, killed certain minority groups in third world countries and no one would seem to care. Like if a politician bombs third world countries for um, monetary gains and kills um, hundreds of thousands or millions of people, no one in the United States would have seemed to be furious. And in terms of um, right-wing policies, I've seen uh, similar things just in a very different w way. Like um, right-wing right um, conservatives, they would, um, they would claim to be um, very Christian, very godly in values, but they were also about, um, they were also about specific lobbying. They were also, in terms of right now, the conservative movement have had sort of a paradigm shift where um, moral conservatism and um, moral social values are kind of not, not, they don't really care about principles anymore in terms of um, how they act. They care more about winning. Like I saw, saw um, people in the conservative movement saying it's all about winning more than principles even anymore. Like there are people who would, um, literally say Trump is more conservative than Reagan. Like lots of people in the conservative movement I've seen um, have been saying that recently and it's just sort of insane to me, like a sort of insane mentality, mentality per se. Like people, uh, Trump, one of the um, biggest problems I've seen with him is um, people always thought he was like some sort of saint, but um, in terms of what he's doing, he's talking with the lobbyists just as much as the leftists have. Like, he was never sort of anti-establishment. He was also an establishment candidate. In terms of um, godliness, he could not name a favorite verse in the Bible. And um, he said he had many of them, but he couldn't um, recite any of them. So um, he said he never um, needed to ask for forgiveness in um, terms of who his pastor um, was. It was um, the guy who um, wrote The Impact of Positive Thinking and was more of a new ager or um, looking at um, Christianity as a literary text. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying this as um, trying to have a proto-Christian argument here. I'm just saying that people could essentially um, be talking to lobbyists from both sides of the political spectrum, making laws that are, uh, that are not in the best interest of the American people, and they would... Um, get lots of funding from their campaign doing that and um they lie to american people they would do such deceitful and disgusting stuff but the um, media um or them try tries um painting some sort of image to them they would actually um be creating harmful po some of their policies would be completely harmful and i guess the american people but they would be looked at as a saint so i always seen um the political spectrum um, needing both sides of sort of reformation. In terms of what I do, I'd have um, a very fiscal resp fiscally responsible policy. I'd have um, capitalism of self-interest. I'd have deontological concept, uh, constitutional federalistic type of approach, such as Alexander Hamilton and um, different different sort of leadership styles throughout um, cons fiscal conservative policies. Like the way. Um, the way both parties are going is I see almost no hope for America's geopolitical future, at least for the next um, two or three decades. In terms of um, how I look at science, science always um, have been a problem to me, not in terms of scientific discovery or scientific inquiry, but overall ethics of um, how science is being used. Like lots of times I'd um, I see um, people my age or um, with less money. They would they would um, have their research stolen, and they would essentially, at some cases, have their research entirely stolen. Um, be told they would be credited for their research in an email and stuff like that, and no one would be willing to look at them because they're they're a young person. So essentially, the the, the um, professor could just literally steal some younger student's research. And even if they, um, if so, if the student tries talking about, it, no one would listen to them, or no one would care. And the professor would just um, sometimes try putting it off as this person is schizophrenic, and they just get kicked out of the academic institution. While the um, professor, lots of times, would end up getting a research grant or award for a student's research. Like I looked at a survey that was very troubling, and it said thirty to forty percent of major accredited scientific discoveries 
were um, either stolen or um, taken through a non-ethical way. And scientists have admitted to doing that um, in terms of the ones that were um, statistically surveyed from a pool. A pool. And I look at the scientific community and um, how people people like me would um, easily be um, be discredited in the scientific community. And mainly one of the biggest discreditations is people aren't willing to hear you out. Like they're like, if you don't have this much money, you, what you're saying is bullshit. If you're not famous, what you're saying is bullshit. If you can't protect yourself or take legal access from someone doing something completely illegal or unethical against you, then what they did is okay. Like this is the law, how it goes. It allows um, it allows people um to treat treat underrepresented people unethically. Like there were um some technical startups in the past I developed technology for, and um, the vesting period or um equity agreement have um passed passes the time period. And I was supposed to um, get my stock certificate legally, but um, instead, once the technology was there and they went about licensing it to a much larger financial institution, making millions upon it, and in terms of my stock certificate, I was just completely ignored. In terms of me having enough evidence, it was a lot, but um, to take legal action against the people they licensed to, I'm just a I'm just a kid technically in the startup world. So I I'm I had lots of very successful projects in the past, but stuff like this happens way too much. Like um when I start seeing lots of the evil in people and how sort of the world have been um have been going going kind of reversed in terms of intelligence lately. It's mainly um the main drive of people used to be innovation or social change for humanity, but now it's just greed or popularity or money or celebrity status. And I was always against postmodernism in that way. Like lots of concepts today, they were the same problems we had decades, of, even centuries ago, just but with more modern technology. Like we still have the same moral, moral constraints as we did over and over again because history um, always repeats itself in a very ironic sort of way. In terms of um, what I would do is um, if I ever ran in politics or um, tried getting a really good position, people would cream me. And by creaming me, they would, instead of um, talking about my policies or um, the valid validity of um, what I'm thinking of or how my policy can impact, They'd say stuff like, you're speech impaired, or um, you're autistic, or you're socially retarded. They would attack you on a personal level rather than listen to your policies. And lots of, especially honest people, honest people and people who want to get into politics or get a head start in the world, they are treated like crap. Like, if you were completely honest and in the best interest of the American people as a politician and had high moral values and made people accountable, whether it's your own party or a different political party, if you make people accountable for uh, their evil doings, you'd be looked at as a horrible, evil person, even though what you're doing is essentially saving lives and in the best interest of the general population. It's it's a deontological concept like you're it's not looked as a universal law, but morally it should be a universal law. But people would think you're some sort of bigot, some sort of evil person like people would want to assassinate you assassinate you and even go as far as sometimes urinating on you if you um if you were an honest morally good person now if you were um if you tried presenting yourself as honest but um had lots of money and and made lots of your political policies in terms of lobbyists and big donors or um always always made policies in terms of increasing your popularity you'd be completely dishonest, not working in the best interest of the people, completely immoral, but you'd make a very good and successful politician and you look like a saint to people. I obviously um, would not want to do something like that. Like um, lots of my biggest struggle, struggles getting ahead in life is um, not that I'm unintelligent or unexperienced. It's just a moral standpoint that I seem to take lots of time. So people would, um, people would literally just label me as schizophrenic or a bigot and they would not be willing to hear um, lots of my 
quote unquote arguments in terms of how humanity should move forward. In terms of my scientific views, um, lots of people would um, consider they're completely bull. Just by um, watching some of my videos, but in terms of um, the validity of how I view science and the technical world, Nikola Tesla and many Nobel Prize lacquerates as well. Nikola Tesla, by the way, never won a Nobel Prize, which is pretty sad. Like um, lots of the technologies he created, he ended up going bankrupt and dying bankrupt at the end. And almost going completely insane, even though he's one of the most revolutionary scientists. But he was never recognized at his, as his, at his time. But anyways, Nikola Tesla and lots of also previous Nobel Prize lacquerate winners and even um, doc, some of Dr. Halton, the late Dr. Halton Arp's arguments do agree with lots of my scientific points of views in terms of theoretical physics, quantum field theory, and, um, and being against sort of um, traditional relativity in terms of special and gravitational relativity. Like lots of my theories, if, you, if I went more into depth into it, and um, actually had the time um, to do our research in a non-biased place, I could literally go, go on 8,000 pages articulately describing the, um, the validity of my um, scientific inquiries. It's not just something that can be described in like two or three minutes. There's lots of people, um, when I do start um, having a valid scientific argument or uh, creating a new theory or something like that, or creating um, groundbreaking research, and I try telling someone about it, they um, legally would agree to um, do to um, mentor me and shadow me in my research and contribute with me, and then they'd be like, "Oh, you're just an autistic minority. You're an autistic minority. I have lots of funny. I have lots of money. You have absolutely no money. No one cares to represent you. So um, we'll steal your research. So that's why I kind of had um, in sort of." being successful the past one or two years, I kind of have the um, you need to fed for yourself mentality. Like lots of times I would um, try to be um, a gentleman to um, girls or be humane or and make friends. But in terms of um, lots of the ways I'd act, like sometimes, like now I'm moving on to a different topic, but sometimes in terms of um, the ways females would treat me as if I was uh, gonna give them my jacket and they were freezing cold, they'd make fun of me. Like people my age, um, in terms of emotional maturity, maturity, even though I'm autistic, I notice a very huge trend in selfishness and um, immaturity emotionally, whether it's someone I'm dating, whether I'm trying to make friends, but in essence, in terms of people voluntarily willing to um, listen to me or spend time with me, for the past five years, I um, never voluntarily, um, from whether a friendship or relationship, no one have actually really truly voluntarily um, volunteered to spend time with me or talk to me. And um, they would just notice, even though I, I'd have a humane heart, they would just notice um, me not being able to pick up on some social cues. Like that's how humanity is. In um, terms of how my life is um, going right now, lots of times I have um, the knowledge to um, perform way beyond doctoral research and, um, and I just get verbally abused by um, some people. Like there were, um, I got um, kind of a sort of kicked out of two academic institutions before because my research um, was unfairly st stolen. Now I'm in a, this new university and um, I was supposed to do something with a biomedical engineer and graduate assistant. And um, essentially he said he'd put me in a better situation um, academically in terms of moving up beyond the traditional system and being able um, to get my life back together. He, he said he was willing to put me in a better situation if I quote unquote build the technology or do what he wants me to do. And I was willing to do that, but then it brought up ethical arguments because he um, he essentially um, started verbally abusing me, like using F-bombs, thre threatening me with phone calls and stuff like that. Essentially, I quit doing the research and um, was put in a bad position academically because of that. Like um, when I tried talking, talking 
many times to the Students Disabilities Office, to um, to the Assistant Dean. Dean, um, like I talked to about eight or nine offices in regards to my disability and trying to pursue different academic research opportunities. And they said, okay, we'll get you somewhere, we'll get you somewhere. But in terms of talking to different office, they're like, talk to this person, then talk to this person. And essentially they've been blowing you off and it's this period of blowing you off. But um, here's the thing I always see about academic institutions. Like in terms of how long I've been involved in academia, it's essentially been kind of six years and I'm not getting um, that far ahead. I am getting blown off a lot by academic institutions in terms of people helping me. Lots of people um, don't consider like Asperger's or Sovereign Syndrome that big of a deal. They don't understand, um, they don't understand like gifted students. Like they're saying, they, they're, they're like, we cannot create a new system for you. But um, lots of times if you had enough money or had enough connections, they'd be more than willing to do that. It's just like people do not understand um, gifted students or students with um, a severe social disability and um, lots of times you would not be able to move up academically. Like there were um, times where I would um, four or five months prior to a professor um, failing, failing me in some assignments or, a pro or me having to drop a course because a professor is failing me, I'd um, four or five months later help him write the lesson plans for that course four or five months earlier. Stuff like that was ridiculous. Like. Um, there were um, times where I was doing bad academically in some of my assignments and some of my courses because I would um, be going to academic events and trying to pursue academic research. And usually um, I haven't been doing that in the past few years. Like I've been um, trying to focus more on my assignments, but um, it's also almost the exact same sort of results. So it's like I, I, I try, um, I still try a lot academically in terms of my assignments and grades and stuff. But right now I um, don't bother as much because you can you can essentially be um, treated really bad um, with a social disability. Like I had um, this professor, she's like, Andrew, um, I don't like you asking so many questions. Um, you should not be allowed to ask questions to guest speakers. Do as you are told. Pro students are not in the position to ask questions. They're, it is persisted to follow and obey. Like this, these were literally her words. Like in terms of um, what, why I um, lean lots of times the way I lean or why I think the way I do lots of times in terms of um, how the universities act, it's almost like a sort of censorship mentality. Like when you wanna um, express your free thoughts and even though they're completely valid and bring up brilliant, brilliant points. You will be censored because of social statuses or monetary statuses and things like that. And I always, um, I also thought it was bull. Like I, um, like lots of people um, in terms of the way they view people, they view people in success by social status and money and greed. Like the whole, um, the whole society is based on greed. Like people um, in terms of when I, when I was interested in um, watching people um, in politics or different social areas, even though I'm more into physics and the computer is at Eric Field, I always saw them um, saying, take pictures that next to the most photogenic people you find, different angles, stuff like that. Like it was all artificial. No one, no one wanted to take pictures next to a homeless person because people are like, that will look bad. No one wanted to take a picture next to someone who's poor or underrepresented minority from both political spectrums. Like if you take a picture in a suit next to a homeless person as a candidate, you look like some sort of creep. Like that, that was, that was their um, sort of views in um, lots of different political trainings. Like you, one of the um, biggest things I've seen with that is lots of people are homeless. Some people are homeless because they didn't work hard or things like that, but lot, there are lots of people who are homeless who um, were just put in a bad situation and they're much more happier than people who are literally multimillionaires or billionaires, billionaires in big corporations. And they're viewed as crap by lots of people. And it's just a social status, less money, less political sort of thing. And that, that to me um, felt kind of bullish. Like people should have sympathy for um, people who are in a lower position than them. 
or um, another thing in the political spectrum, both leftists and conservatives and even um, even libertarians, neocons, um, socialist green parties, all of them had this um, method where if you were um, if you were going to go to a college or school or youth campaign um, not to try, try to have um, more photogenic people and um, lots of your photos like they what bothered me is never they said um, try to bring as many people with social disabilities or underrepresented minorities it's always the most photogenic people like beautiful girls in um, in sororities or um, strong guys or whatever ever to be in those photo photos for the candidate to quote unquote look better and this whole artificial mentality of um, of how humanity is sort of going is what I think is completely bull. Like, by bull, I mean bull. Like, you need to have a sense of humanity. You need to have some sort of remorse for other, others. And um, it's all gr driven by greed and social status. Like, right now, the whole um, fed for myself mentality that I have is... Um, is helping me in my career where I still take a moral high ground, even though I'm struggling and getting verbally abused a lot, by um, still take a moral high ground and still um, try pursuing research independently and um, still have some projects that are quite successful, um, like participating in um, research grants and things like that. But even though I'm somewhat successful, I'm not as much as I want it to be, or I'm not as accredited in terms of lots of my scientific views. Like I'm, I'm viewed as um, one of the most hated people in terms of everyone who knows me. But here's the thing, everyone who knows me really doesn't know me. And those are my political, scientific and views of the world. In terms of um, how I, my faith and religion, I am um, in essence, a Coptic Orthodox minority, I um, do believe in God, and there are lots of scientific arguments why I believe in God, and lots of philosophical and scientific arguments on why I'm a Christian, why I have these specific viewpoints. Like, uh, I'm not just uh, believing in intelligent design just because I'm like, oh, everyone else, everyone else in the Christian community believes in that, so I'm a young earth creationist now. Like, I'm not even quote unquote, a young earth creationist because I don't believe the earth is really um, as little as 6,000 years old. That's been proven historically unaccurate and stuff like that. In terms of um, lots of my scientific views, relig Christian religious views, philosophical views, they all have um, lots of scientific, philosophical, and logical backing. And I can literally um, write thousands upon thousands of pages why my views are the, the way they are. And lots of people who say, they're um, strongly threshold to their views are not able to make a claim like that. So um, anyways, okay, now, yeah, these are my views of how the world is going and um, what humanity really is. And yeah, this is how I view the world. So um, thanks for watching.